Okay, so I, I hope you have you know basics of uh, Python, and then we will start with uh, introduction to statistics. And statistics is very important to you know build your foundation for any sort of data analysis, and it is actually the background of machine learning. So I don't want to uh, make this class boring by you know going through slides. So uh, just like we had a small icebreaker session in menti.com, we will have two more sessions in menti where you will be able to answer questions based on whatever we are learning in this PPT and uh, post that. So one and a half hours of, uh, uh, of, of uh, PPT session and a lot of interaction. And then it will be followed by uh, a Python session where we will implement some of the statistics uh, which we are going to uh, see in this class. Now, a fun fact about statistics is there are lies, there are damn lies, and there are statistics, right? So whenever you see a, a TV debate, uh, it is very popular among our father and you know the elders who are there, uh, predominantly in the male society, that we watch a lot of news, right? And whenever there is an election result which comes out, um, the opposition who has, has not won the election will say that uh, if we have not, you know, uh, performed well in this election, if you see the number of seats, but our voting percentage has increased, right? So this is how they take the help of statistics to make sure that they are proving their point, right? Whenever you see politicians or, you know, business persons, they always keep a track of the statistics just to showcase that even if we are, you know, down with some of the parameters, we are going forward or, or we are in a forward moving, uh, forward looking uh, mechanism through statistics. So statistics is something which we can take advantage of in order to prove our point. As a data scientist, it is very important for you to make sure that your management and your stakeholders understand uh, and, and are getting convinced with your answers. Because a lot of these folks who are on, on top of you doesn't even know how the technology works, uh, how tough it is to implement the machine learning models or how easy it is to implement some of the machine learning models. What they know is how it can generate revenue and how it can run without any bug in the production, right? So, one thing which you have to be very good at is to convince your stakeholders and your management. So if I take my example, my, my immediate manager or the senior manager is a chartered accountant. So you can understand my pain in convincing him about technology and what technology to use, uh, how to, uh, you know, how I can convince him to approve budgets, right? So you have to convince using statistics, whether it's your model, or whether it's your product or anything in your life. Now we will quickly introduce what is statistics and then we will see how it is important in statistics and uh, data science and machine learning. We will look into the types and you know, the sources of data in statistics, the types of statistics, and we will particularly focus on uh, descriptive statistics in this class. And, and the next se session will be on the inferential statistics part, which is majorly the uh, the uh, so so descriptive is actually the foundation, but inferential statistics is what, which you need to understand because a lot of questions in interview will be asked from the inferential form. Now, statistics is the science of conducting studies to collect, organize, and summarize, and analyze and draw conclusion from the data. Right, so a little difficult to understand. So, statistics is something which we, we conduct study on some data after we collect, organize, and summarize, and we then draw a conclusion from the data. So if you see statistics, statistics has majorly three, three parts. One is the data mining phase. One is the knowledge discovery phase. So once you mine the data, say, for example, I want to fetch the data for the customer review of my product, say, Zomato, right? So I will mine the data. In order to mine the data, you have to write some SQL queries or you have to write some queries uh, on top of Hadoop. Um, 
uh, data lakes, uh, whatever it is, and you mine the data. So for example, you got your data in an Excel format, right? And then you discover something from the data. You, you, have, you, you get a knowledge of the data, right? And you recognize a pattern. So you can see that uh, uh, a lot of customers are not happy with the service Zomato is providing, say, at night. So this is a pattern you have recognized within the data. And based on that, to, to make sure that your model is able to understand this pattern, you basically perform machine learning uh, algorithms on top, uh, algorithms on top of it. So it can be prediction, uh, clustering, classification, whatever it is. Right. Now, machine learning and statistics are very interconnected. As I told you, that without statistics, you will not be able to prove your machine learning algorithm. Right. So you have to make sure that you are taking the right amount of data. You have the randomness in the data. So I can give you one example. This is a very classic example that when the face recognition system was built. Um, by mobile applications, uh, particularly uh, iPhone. So they trained the model on top of, uh, you know, uh, people who are majorly in the first world country. So it was uh, United States, it was Europe, uh, some countries which are uh, developed. And it was able to uh, unlock the phone using those face facial features but it, when it came to Africa, the facial features are very different and it was not able to unlock, right? So the problem lie was that when they did their statistical analysis to you know, find randomness in the data, they didn't took random data from all parts of the world. Rather, they took some data or sample data from, the, uh, from wherever they got the facial uh, data, right? So it is very important that you take random data. Say, for example, I want to calculate you know, the average uh, age of Bangalore. So if I want to calculate the average age of Bangalore, I have to make sure that I am taking uh, samples from each and every corner of Bangalore, right? It, it should not be clustered to one part of Bangalore and then you took like 10 clusters of data and then try to create the average. So it will prob probably deviate because a lot of young folks stay in some places that if you know Bangalore, uh, young population is majorly into, you know, Indranagar, HSR. So these are places. So your data might get skewed and you will not be able to create a model which is good enough. So that's why I'm saying that machine learning and statistics are hand in hand and you should have a better, very good understanding of statistics in order to build your machine learning algorithm. Ping me if you have any questions, any doubt, unmute yourself and ask questions. So statistics is the grammar of science. So if you want to understand, you know, machine learning algorithms, you have to, you, you better be good with statistics because when you go to interview, they'll probably ask one or two questions from statistics before you, they, uh, you know, delve into machine learning, data science or AI, whatever it is. Now statistics is applied in everywhere, uh, with medicine, business, weather forecast, stock markets, uh, any domain you see, the, the crisp of it is that statistics is the base of any analysis, right? You can look into the statistics application uh, in, in each of these uh, section uh, and domains. I will share the slides with you. Statistics is everywhere and we will go into the uh, data in statistics and the type of sources. Now, data is the collection of information which you basically get from any source. So it can be data like a number, any fact, any textual data, any words, any measurement. You know, you get a lot of data from sensors, right? Zeros and ones also, bits. So um, data is everywhere. And there are two sources of data. It is very important to understand there are two sources of data. One is the primary data and the secondary data. Okay. Primary data is the data which has been collected firsthand by the researcher for addressing a population at hand. So for example, whenever we go for an interview, uh, the interviewer actually collects the data firsthand. So they are able to get the information from you. So this is actually the primary data. Any observation you make, any questionnaires you ask. So for example, just now you answered some question over menti.com, right? So this, this is a primary data because I am able to fetch that directly from you. There is no third party involved focus group sessions, which we have, and case studies. 
Next, we'll come into the secondary data. Secondary data is the data that has already been collected and available to other sources. For example, previous research, whenever we Google any data, it's actually a secondary data which we are facing, um, uh, which we are fetching. Next is diaries, which is already you know uh, read by other folks. Um, then letters, web info, and census data. So these are all secondary data. Now the type, the major two types of data we have is quantitative and qualitative data. I will, I will go very fast here uh, because these are very conceptual and uh, it is you know good to know and we we know all these things by intuition. So it is nothing which we will learn new. So we have two types of data. One is quantitative and qualitative. The quantitative data is where you have discrete and continuous values, right? Uh, and and we have uh, example sets like if you have if you are saying three people, four people, five people, you are saying discreetly there are four people, right? When I say my height is five point uh, five feet uh, ten inch, it means that uh, it can range anywhere from say zero to one hundred, and the intervals are so small that it is continuous data, right? Next is the qualitative data where you have you know nominal data like male and female, and you have ordinal data like um, neutral, happy, sad, right? So these are all ordinal type of data. We'll come to this again in the inferential statistics part. Next is the type of data quality issue. So when we look into statistics, we are basically focusing on uh, data quality. Say for example. Uh, whenever you look into data, what are the type of analysis you do? Right? You check whether there is any duplicacy in the data. If there is any inconsistency in, inconsistency in the data, say for example, if I fetch the data from Zomato, the customer feedback, and I can see a lot of data related to you know customer name and customer ID and the billing amount. So this is not consistent, right? So there is issue with the data, uh, and and then you might see that there are transaction records. Right, and then uh, you will see that uh, some transaction has happened, but when it was reversed, the reverse transaction is not being captured. So this is again a con inconsistency of the data. Next is correctness of the data. You check whether it is correct or not. Uh, the age should not be a negative number, right? Your salary should not be negative number. Your salary should not be zero. So these are correctness of the data. You check the timeliness of the data that, that the feedback forms given to students from instructors. Say, for example, if I share any data with you uh, with the date 29 January 2022, you better make sure that you know the data is uh, well timed. That okay, this is actually not the data of 29, but rather you should send the data for uh, you have sent the data for uh, 27. So this is the timeliness of the data. We have missing data, which is very important. Whenever we we get any data, we make sure that there is no missing value. Now, the two things which we need to understand is population and samples. So for example, when I, whenever I say that I want to find out the average age of Bangalore or say Delhi, I will make sure that you know I'm able to predict or, or, or calculate the population average, but it is not possible to uh, get the average of you know, uh, whatever the population of Delhi is like, I, I believe it's near to two crores. So it should not be, it should not be the case that you will go to each and every person or collect the data for each and every person and then find the population uh, mean. So for that, what you need to do is you have to create samples. When you create samples, what happens is that you take small pockets of areas from where you take data at random. So we'll ask random people about their age. You'll not go to one house and then ask the age because you know that you know, um, there might be skewness in the data if we, if we take that approach. So rather we'll make 10 clusters of every area and we'll, we'll take randomness in the data. So we'll select data at random. And then there are two parts of it. So whenever we calculate the descriptive statistics, we make sure that we understand whether the statistics is called a population mean or population standard deviation or population variation or whatever it is and whether it is for the sample. So the formula at the background changes a bit. 
and we'll also go through that in the subsequent slides. Now, for example, uh, hi, uh, sorry, from the previous slide, I wanted to ask what is population and sample proportion exactly? Population and? A population and sample proportion. Okay, sample proportion. So it basically means that you know, what proportion of the data you are able to, you are capturing. Right. So when we go into the inferential statistics part, we'll come through all of these terms because they are very important in order to infer any uh, any any you know statistics. Okay. So it is nothing but the proportion of data which you take, and uh, it is being designated by you know pi and um, rho, and we'll look into it in the inferential statistics part. We have uh, uh, a two slider for that. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, understand population and sample. Say for example, the wait time for all 566 cars passing through the drive-through of McDonald's and the wait time for the subset of 100 cars. So you have population of 566 cars and you took a sample of 100 cars from McDonald's and we'll try to find, uh, to, to, uh, and we, here we are inferring what is the population and what is the sample? So the total population is 566 and the subset of 100 is actually the sample, right? Now the average wait, waiting time for a population of 566 cars is actually the parameter, okay? So this is the parameter which you have and the average waiting time for a sample is called the statistic. So uh, this also happens with, you know, prediction of election uh, results. So whenever we have exit polls, what we do is we have the entire parameter of the population of that particular state. And then we take the sample, which is we, which we call the statistic. We, we use the statistics to infer which party is going to win in the next election. But again, there is a, there are a lot of questions based on the sample size. We see that, you know, uh, election results, exit polls with only 30,000 sample size. And in a diverse country like India and a diverse state, uh, it is very difficult to come to a conclusion of exit poll. Now we will go through population and sample in the inferential statistics part because it is a huge concept which we need to understand before we dive into hypothesis testing. Now, one thing to understand is the type of statistics. So there are two types of statistics. One is descriptive statistics, and next is the inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is uh, almost 70% of this course uh, in, sta in, in statistics and descriptive statistics will be a, um, a small part because there's uh, nothing much to understand in the descriptive statistics side. 